Mmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to my latest mod for Tabletop Simulator. This is Pathfinder, the adventure card game, and it is Wrath of the Righteous. Now, this mod is in beta, uh, but I made this big video about, oh, I'm back, I'm back, and then I thought I'd, oh, I'll play adventure card game, but it was a little bit of a the mod was all broken and I had to fix it and stuff and it took, was taking way too long so I thought I'd make this video now even though it's a little bit premature for this mod to be released publicly because some of you may recognize this as the very first mod I ever made right back whenever Tabletop Simulator was first released and added scripting. Uh, basically there was a Pathfinder mod but I didn't like the table so I made my own table and that's how I started scripting. And as I'm sort of getting back into it, I know that like there's a huge patch recently and it broke a lot of my mods again. Uh, so I, I wanted to go through all my mods and fix them all up. So I thought it'd be fun to start with my very first mod, which is this one. But it was actually, you know, cause I'm a bit of a tinkerer. It was just taking forever. So I thought, you know what I'll do? I've, I've got it to the stage where it's now ready for me to beta test and play some games so I can start playing it on the channel and I thought I'd uh, release it as well with this video to explain how it works because like all my mods, the current mod I'm working on, you can download from the workshop from the work in progress mod link in the workshop. So you can uh, test this out if you like. So I'm just gonna go through how it works and we'll get into it. The starters, uh, basically the game itself isn't automated but the setup is automated. And at the moment, only the first two scenarios are set up. If I hit the setup scenario button, you can look at the chat log over here on the left. If I hit that button, it's gonna error because you need to have at least one scenario on the board. And the reason why you need to do that is because the, uh, this, some people play scenarios without bothering to play proper adventures or entire adventure paths. So you need at least one scenario. So let's grab the scenario, put it on. It's the godless ones. It's the first scenario of into, into the world wound, which is the introductory crest. Now, if I hit set up, it'll still error because I haven't got any players set up. So let's come over here and have a look at our players. We have the six gray ones, which are the default heroes. We have the three, the four green ones, which are the character expansion pack heroes. And then we've got these purple ones, which are like the promo golems. Now in the original set, cause I actually just bought core set two, which is why I'm sort of really into Pathfinder at the moment. But, and also the RPG computer game version of Wrath of the Righteous is about to come out. It's in beta. Anyway, whatever the point is, these purple ones are the goblin heroes. These are kind of weird because basically up here, I have all the class decks for these things and I haven't set any of these up yet and I probably never will, but people can use them if they want the data's here. Uh, basically the class decks are very, very complicated you've got to completely swap out card systems and you've got to do a lot of setup because it's designed to make an even playing field for competitive play so you can make proper comparisons between games so they're up there but these goblins are actually just characters and unlike all these heroes like all the gray heroes and the green heroes in the class decks they're designed to play specifically with this set but these goblin guys are kind of designed to play with any set and there's one for each one. So we've got a Rise of the Rune Lords, a Skulls and Shackles and uh, a Wrath one here. So you can use these guys as well. So I've put them out there cause I quite like using the goblins. So they're there as well. Anyway, the point is you can just grab any of these heroes and grab a bag out of them like this and you just place it on the board that you want to use and just hit the place button and it'll uh, set the board up. Okay. There's also a little sort of random hero dispenser. You can pull this out 
and you'll notice in the chat window it's it's shuffling the random chest so that's automatically shuffled and you can just drag these out like uh, so to do a random as well boom 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 and boom now you'll note that I've got Hask here, which I chose myself, and there's another one here. You don't need to bother deleting that. You can just drag out another one here. So that's Balzar. He's an awesome one. Okay, so if I click Balzar, it'll actually delete uh, Hask, the Hask bag for me. And in fact, even if I don't like what I see, I can just drag out another one. Uh, Kaya's already out. I could just drag out Saloni and hit bam, and it will redo it. Okay, so once you've got all your player boards set out, oh wait, one more thing about the player boards is basically these things are all sunken down, so they're, they, they're, they're little objects that have sunken down with the setup so they won't interfere with the die rolling. But I've also got these little tokens you can drag out, these little marks. So say I later on I level up my strength, I can drop it like that. And then there's a little button called lock. I just hit lock and it kind of sinks it into the table. So say I want to, I eventually upgrade to this guy. I could drop it there and hit lock. And you can see you end up with a nice, uh, a nice sort of visible ticks on what's active. And you can right click that lock button to unlock them if you want to delete them or whatever. Anyway, so now we've got our board set up, let's hit the setup button. Your blammo, and it still doesn't function because the, the uh, setup needs to understand whether, I'll just chuck this in the bin. Uh, the setup needs to know that uh, it's ready to set up, right? And the way it does that is by checking that there's player decks on the player boards. Now you can play this game solo, so it'll run the setup if there's a single deck uh, placed, right? So make sure you get all your decks set up before you hit setup scenario. So if you come down here, if you've got your own deck or you want to do, use your own deck, just hit, I want to use my own deck and it will delete this button. Otherwise, just hit the fetch button like so, okay? Now, if I just come over here, there's one of these little rules. Uh, that thing there should not be there. That's uh, uh, hide my setup zone. That's uh, <laughs> a leftover from me modding. So basically, if I open up my rule books, these are the default decks for the greys and the, the greens. Okay, so if you, you can use these decks or make your own. So this is made your own. This one I can just fetch. Right, I'm just going to use the default decks, like so. Now you'll notice that Sileoni, when I clicked, if you look at the chat log, instead of having the nice fetch deck text, it says I'm missing a couple of spells. And that's because Pathfinder by default only uh, is only really for four players. To play six players, which is what I usually play in real life because my family is six, is uh, you need to have the character expansion cards. And to use the character expansion, you need to add extra banes and villains and, you know, boons and all this kind of stuff into these decks. So if you come up here, you'll see a thing called the character add-on decks. You can pull this out and you can drag it out. And that there is all the cards, right? All, uh, all the cards in the expansion in one big pile. Or you can drag out a green one and a red one to just see the boons and the banes. And the reason I've separated them is that Wrath of the Righteous is a little bit difficult. It's not the best balanced of the adventure card games that they've made. So some people, they like to add only parts of the character expansion because there's particularly nasty barriers in, uh, in the character add-on deck, which is very difficult for early game until you get a bit of power. 
So you can choose to not add them if you want. And same with here, you can, these are just the banes themselves, uh, the boons themselves, if you just wanna add, you know, customize your game a little. I don't care about that. I'm just gonna add everything like so. But remember, you will need to add uh, henchmen no matter what you do, because uh, you know if you're using six people, you'll need to have six henchmen, and there's only four by default or five by default, or whatever. Okay, so that's that added. You know, and while I'm here, I'll also have a look at this. This is the promo cards. So let's drag these out. Basically, if I pull out these promo cards. These are the promo cards. Now, I didn't make the all these scans, okay? These all came from, uh, these all came from other other mods on the workshop. So, I like, I don't have any of these cards in real life. Well, I've actually got one of them. I've got, like, uh, I've, I've got this little sweet dragon costume card. Anyway, the point is, there's these cards here as well. Uh, you've got a barrier, we've got a bunch of boons, we've got a couple of monsters. So let's just add them as well, why not? And like all my mods, I've got, you know, these, uh, you know, trash cans that present everything. Now also here, there's these things called the iconic heroes. Now the iconic heroes were like if you buy the actual miniature models, they came with some cards. Now what's interesting about these is these are more advanced cards, but see how they've got the title owner? If the title has the title owner, that means you can treat it as a basic card and put it in your starting deck. So if you want, you can just click the fetch cards button and it will pick out all the cards out of this deck that match your heroes. So we've got Hask, we have Anduin over here. We have Crow, that's this guy here. And we have Celine, this girl here. And then you can add these to your decks if you wish. Okay, now, like I said, these are all, I, I don't have any of these. See, some of them are really badly scanned. So that's too badly scanned for me. So I'm never going to use that. And Anduin also comes with her own version, like a, a cohort version of this card. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. But we'll use his uh, Earthbreaker. So we'll fetch his deck. And then I'll just look in here. I'll find one of his weapons. Let's get rid of the sickle. And I'll put in his mace. I'll do the same with her. She has an arcane staff here, so let's just search. This is a item. I think I'll get rid of potion of striding. And put this in here. Looks like there's an errant uh, snap point that shouldn't be there. You boink. And he also has the little badger. So let's search through here. Frog is a must have in this. I think this is the only other ally, right? Here, I'll get rid of horse and add in biter. And that's it. So that they're the iconic cards that match our heroes. So I'll do that as well. And also there's another little bag in here that just has the iconic deck without the scripts to fetch based on what heroes are active. Okay, so that's the promos. Okay, so now we have it all ready to go. We've got our decks the way we want. Oh, we haven't, we're still missing a deck here. We've got our decks set up. Everything's ready to go. So now we can hit the setup 
And if you look in the chat log, it'll tell you everything it's doing. And it'll just go bam. It builds the, the scenario based on the scenario you have available. So this one basically has uh, three different types of bad guys. They're placed there. And you might have noticed if you're very quick that the, the, the villains and henchmen are placed. They don't fly across the map. They just place instantly. So you can't even look over here and see them do their thing. And it's flied over. So they're completely hidden. You've got a blessing deck here. This is now called the, uh, what do they call it now? The, the hourglass or whatever. And over here we have the Demoling, which is the servitor for this for this quest. So you've got the servitor table into the world womb, Demoling, the Demoling is here. And that's pretty much, we're ready to go. So we can talk about a couple of other little things. So let's just randomly put these guys up here. We won't think too hard about it. Uh, So, right. So, let's have a quick look at the player board. There's a number of things going on here, but before we do that, we'll just talk about the hotkeys that I have set up in this game, because you know how I like my hotkeys in my mods. Again, I have not fully tested this with multiplayer yet, and I know it doesn't work in hot seat mode. But if you uh, press the hotkey, which is the numpad, one to six correlates to these different people. So if I press the one, I zoom to here, two zooms to here, three zooms to here, four zooms to here, five to here, six to here. And I can hold, hold down zero and press one, and I'll actually zoom to my uh, little marker. So basically, if I'm playing Husk, I can come down here to look at my thing. I go, okay, it's time for me to draw a card. I press zero, one. I grab the card and then I just press one and I'm back where I wanna be. Okay, so that's the first one we, we've uh, rolled for. Anyway, so let's have a quick look at the, the actual board. Okay. Uh, first thing you got is the advanced the blessing deck. Uh, you still need to remember to do this. But if you look at the chat log, you'll see that it actually has a turn, tells you the blessing and gives you a little rundown of what's on the blessing card. And of course it's switched it over here. It gets the turn value from the numbers up here. So uh, the amount of turns left or whatever. So like if there's no cards in there, it'll say game over, for example. So we've advanced the blessing deck and now we grab the, the card, flip it over. Oh wait, we've got to draw our cards first. So this guy has five, so we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, clicking on the draw button. I won't bother doing it on the other guys, but that's what you do. And this guy, it's a strength merely three to gain. So we should definitely gain this. Our strength is six. So we're just gonna click the button D6 and hit roll. And that's basically how you do the game itself. Okay, so we've got a six. Okay, so great. We'll put that straight into our hand. We'll spend a blessing and we'll draw again. And now we have Rallying Cry, one of these horrible barriers but we won't go into all that right now but basically uh when you've got your the rollers you can just click as many die as you want and you can do modifiers or you can even go negative five on the modifier and you hit the roll and it will roll all the dice you've picked and it actually outputs it all to the chat window so you don't have to do any calculations yourself Okay, so if I look in the chat window, you can see the little output there plus the total. And it includes the, uh, the modifier and it actually prints that number there. See that number that says 32? That is actually the result. Okay, so if I go one, two, 
two d6s and a d20 plus two, which is a more realistic roll for this game. You'll see that my result is 23, very good roll. Now, uh, basically, originally every time I hit roll, roll, it would then clear the die numbers, but I found out that I often use the same die numbers each time. So these will stay active. So that's staying at two, it stays at one. So you can click to, click, left click to increase, right click to reduce, or if you click the X button, it'll set everything to zero. And the reason I do that is because often, you know, if you're say Salone or whatever her name is, you might be rolling, uh, you know, your arcane die plus, uh, plus two very, very often. So it was just a pain to keep doing that. So if you hit the X button, it'll reset it. And if you want to manually delete your dice, you just right click the X. Okay, and that's that. Now this is the bit, oh wait, and also hit this to spur, spawn the servitor. There's very, there's different things where it happens in this game where it goes, oh, spawn the servitor. And you just click that button to spawn it and it will copy it from here. That's why that's up there. Okay. Uh, now the final thing really about the mod is the positions on the player board. I've sort of divvied up the player board into sections. Anything on the top row will go into the discard pile. So if I put things on the top row like this, they go into the discard pile. And if I flip them around, right? That means they're gonna get recharged. So say I use this, I add my dice and then I do a test and recharge it. I uh, hit the discard button and what'll happen is all these ones here will be sent to the discard pile. Everyone that's face down will be recharged. You can blam, okay? Very simple. Now you'll note that uh, the, the things here disappeared and that's because anything in kind of the section here, you know, like from roll to the draw deck is where you put your banes, okay? And what I mean by that is uh, anything in here, even if it's in a deck, because you can, you know, do multiple things at once, will be discarded back to the box, okay? Even things in here will be discarded back to the box. But if you are, uh, the reason why there's two henchmen came out, it's gonna drag them from two different decks by accident. But if there's anything that says, oh, you failed the Bane, like say, say, say we're playing this one and we go, oh, you fail the Mongol Ranger, it needs to be put back in the box. So you can actually, flip that over and stick it like that anywhere on this sort of area of the board where the rolls are. And now when I hit discard, they'll, they'll all be discarded, but this one will be left here for you to manually put back on whatever deck it's from. And you've got to remember, these are all flying back here and uh, these are all flying back here into their perspective decks and then they're getting shuffled in per the rules. So you can watch them fly over and uh, they'll drop down and shuffle. Now, uh, also over here in this sort of section here, that is where things will get returned to the hand. So let's just draw. So say this is a reveal that gets returned to the hand at the turn, that'll get discarded, this will get discarded, this will get discarded, and this one here is just reveal. I'll just put them like that, right? And now when I do the discard, whoa, That's, uh, that was weird.
Okay, so uh, I, I made this uh, I made this video using the wrong file before I fix this error. So I'll just do it here. Basically, the point is these will get sent back to the hand like that and pop back into the hand. Okay, you can see this is a temporary one. Like I said, there's some bugs still. But the point is that's the way the board works. Anything in here will get discarded to the box and vanished. Anything face down will be left. Anything up here will be sent to your discard pile and anything face down will be recharged. Boom. Okay, so that is pretty much how the mod functions. And I'll be uh, doing uh, a playthrough pretty soon. I'm just gonna quickly jump in and fix that one remaining bug, uh, which I'm a bit embarrassed about, but I just did this whole massive video and I can't be bothered doing it again. So I will see you guys next time. Oh, and there's one more thing I forgot. Over he up here, I've got the campaign story journal. This is a fan edition that someone wrote. I got it from Board Game Geek and it's by Julian Dick. And basically it's a narrative of the quests, like a, a little book that you can read to give the whole game a bit more flavor because flavor is a little bit lacking in the original Pathfinders. This idea was so good that uh, they've actually incorporated this into edition two. Like in edition two, you don't have, uh, you know, these scenario cards and stuff. Instead, you have like a campaign story journal that has full on stories and characters and conversations. And that also retains all the information on how to set up each individual quest. So you can just, this is like a set state, there's 27 pages to it, and you can just, you know, read. And that's, that's that. Okay, I'm going this time, I mean it. See ya.